Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's beautiful to come to the city of the living God. Shout hallelujah. To the city of the living God, I love the language of the Bible. I don't know where you live, what city, what environment. I don't know how you feel about where you live. But when you are saved in Christ, the scripture says that you are in the city of the living God. Even in that village, even in that dirty environment. It begins with the invisible to affect the visible. The reason why you are not speaking to your visible is because you cannot access your invisible. Once you know your invisible, you can sketch your visible. You can design your visible in the pattern of the invisible. I don't know who is an architect here. That I've seen engineer. I don't know what area of engineering. Any 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 architect here? Architect here. I've seen an architect there. Okay, a student of architecture. Oh, I've seen another architect there. Wonderful. When you are given a project to design, if it is your own. You already have an invisible archetype, the invisible original in your mind. If it is not your own, you try to access the invisible by asking for briefing. So you ask the person who has a project. You say, okay, so talk to me. What, what do you feel? What do you see about your kitchen, your living area? Just, just get, talk to me. What do you see about um, your outside space? So talk to me. What is actually happening is that you are trying to access the invisible, the one that is not there for others to see. What I see invisibly, you don't see. You only see the visible me. You see how I dress, how I look like, but you don't see the invisible roadmap that leads me to dressing the way I dress. But when I talk to you, you can access it. That's why architects, engineers, those who are involved in building things, designing things, they first of all listen. So they have briefing. At the end of the briefing, they have invisible conceptualization. They conceptualize the invisible. They begin to see the invisible. Now the next stage is to translate the invisible into visible by sketching. And after the sketching, there is step by step intentional process systematically building out, fletching out, and erecting a, de a, de a, a define. When you hear of the word edifice, what is built? So a define is building. They begin to edify, turn what was invisible, just conceptually, imaginarily, they turn it into an edifice, something that can be touched, related with, and described. That is how life is. So the scripture says, you have come to Mount Zion, where the city of the living God, that is your invisible place. How large is the city of God for you? How wealthy is the city of God for you? How secured and protected how blessed is the city of God for you? So you may live in a slum. You may live in a very poor, beggarly 
very terrible environment of life. But that is not what defines you. What defines you is the invisible sin. That is when you are doing briefing, when you are talking to a friend, you are talking the invisible. So the invisible gives you language, first of all. Because invisible is a mind. It's a spirit. Gives you language. Gives you expression. Gives you how you do things. So you dress according to your invisible experience. Glory to God. You can wear the same dress with character and poise and confidence. You can wear the same thing every day, but with style, with confidence, with poise, with boldness and wealth upon you. You can dress in that same way, looking like a beggar, asking for pity, making everybody feel like you are a mistake and everybody should come around and help you. And so when people talk to you, they talk to you like that. That's why some young women, very beautiful, the next moment, anybody wants to talk to again, including somebody who is not at any stage of talking to your mind, since you walk around like a pity, and somebody has 5,000 naira in the pocket as the whole of his life saving, but he knows you are worth 2,500 naira, so he comes talking to you. I want to have you. And you say, like me? In this neighborhood, Avongo, 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 yes, a young girl, because of how you, your invisible reality translated, your conversation, your conversation about life. Oh, glory to God. That's it. For many years, people say, Father Patrick is a very, very, very proud person, arrogant person. I have been stubborn over the years to impose my invisible experience upon people. I've been consistent. By the grace of God, I have been consistent. I have made a living out of annoying people with what I see. And I've made a reputation out of insulting people's situation by what I see. Jeremiah, God asks, what is it that you see? God is going to relate with you based on what you see. Welcome to the city of the living God. What is your city of the living God? How large, how wealthy, how prominent, how glorious. Just feel like speaking to your spirit this morning. So when we talk about firstborn experience, the firstborn experience takes place in the city of the living God. So Mount Zion is the dwelling of the firstborn. The scripture says in the psalm that the Father God has preferred the gates of Zion to all other gates, to all other places and other tribes of Israel. The scripture was not ultimately, ultimately, ultimately talking about the physical Zion that is associated with a location in Jerusalem and sometimes associated with the whole of Jerusalem. But the scripture was talking about a spiritual place of God's dominion, of God's dwelling, where those who belong to him will find a space of life. Where those who belong to him will find economy. Where those who, be, who belong to him will find expression and resources and find opportunity. Where those who belong to him will have a vision of life from. Where those who belong to him will have life take place from. So the first one, when we talk about the first one as the chief one, is because it's a life in Mount Zion. Is a life in Zion. Is a life around God. Is a life in God. The firstborn 
is God's born. It's God's own. He has made it clear, and we have been looking at that scripture, that the firstborn is God's born. So Mount Zion, the city of the living God, becomes the dwelling, becomes the origin, becomes the homeland, the homeland of the firstborn, the heavenly Jerusalem, innumerable company of angels, the general assembly. All of this is about the firstborn. And it's because the firstborn belongs to God directly. The firstborn is not a church experience. The firstborn is not religious experience. The firstborn is not denominational thing. That if you are in redeemed, you are firstborn. If you are in if you are in apostolic faith, you are firstborn. If you are in Anglican, you are firstborn. If you are Catholic, you are firstborn. Or if you are in one other small gathering of people, you are not firstborn. And some people, in the, especially in the Catholic setting, they will pride themselves and boast. Boast who is the founder. Oh, so, so, so person is the founder of so, so church. And he was founded so, so, so year. So, so, so person is the founder of the other church. And he was founded so, 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 so year. And Jesus Christ is the founder of the Catholic church. And he was founded when? So, 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 so year. And so that's the boast. And the person who's talking about this does not know Zion. The person who's boasting about this and castigating and talking derogatively or, you know, about other places of worship does not have a sense of Zion, a sense of belonging to God. And so there are teachers who make people proud of the churches they belong to and they don't know God. People who make, them, who make people arrogant and insolent in their Christian life because of who they say is their father in the law and is their teacher. And those people don't know God. So the firstborn experience, the experience in God, in immediate experience, in immediate contact, as in begetting, not being begotten as a doctrinal church thing, or being begotten as a spirit, mind, life thing. The mind that is of God. The spirit that is of God. And the life that is of God. That you first of all know. The scripture says the reason why the world does not know you. Does not, because he did not know him. The scripture, the reason why the world does not know us. Because the world did not know him. So you don't worry whether you are known or not. You talk the spirit. You talk Zion. You talk heavenly Jerusalem. You talk belonging to the innumerable company of angels. You talk belonging to the higher realms because you are God's chief one. So why do we call, why is firstborn prototokos in a spiritual re revelation? Why is firstborn truly first one, best one, chief one, the foremost one, the leading one, the most important one, one above others. The first one is because he belongs to Zion. Say, I belong to Zion. I am first one. Say, I am God's first one. Say, I belong to the city of God. I am God's best one. Say, I belong to the heavenly Jerusalem. I am God's chief one. I belong to the innumerable, I stand in the midst of the innumerable company of angels. I am God's foremost one. I belong to God himself through Christ Jesus as God's firstborn. Therefore, I am God's leading one. I am God's most important one. Therefore, I am above others. Others that are not in Zion. I am before others. Others that are not in Zion. I am ahead of others. Others that are not in God. 
I am in front of others. I come before others. Others that do not belong to God. Why? I belong to God. Glory to God. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.